So could you tell us a little bit about um, about how you how you got there or what inspired you to um, to to be a co-founder of the Nigeria Football Club? Why you started um, uh, Miss Nigeria Germany and um, and yeah, how 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 did you get there? Tell us a little bit. Thank you, thank you very much. And uh, my apology for coming in a little bit late. I was just uh, carried away when I was listening to Robin, the way she was, you know, trying to explain this there, uh, because I was actually not very sure, you know, what actually you meant by this uh, act of. Uh, so when I listened to her, that really gave me a little bit of insight. And thank God with your moderation, you're also able to make it clearer. Of, of, you're right. I My background was actually geography and regional planning. That was my first degree at the University of Calabar. And so when I got to Germany, um, I got a cultural shock. Um, um, of course, uh, I'm not, I wasn't expecting uh, them to open their hands and welcome me to Germany, but at least I was expecting to see what I felt were standard, you know, relations in in a, you know in a foreign country. You know, looking at the Holy the Hollywood, looking at the films we watch in Africa. You know, where you have you know opportunities everywhere and the rest of. So I was expecting that, and but uh, when I came in, I realized that uh, even sitting down next to a close a close person in the train becomes a problem. And sometimes you have to, you know, walk out from the seat just because they are sitting to, in, in, next to a, a black man. And that was 19, 19, uh, 19, 19, um, 19, uh, 1904, 1904, uh, when I first, uh, you know, um, 19, 1994, sorry, when I first, uh, you know, got into, got into Germany. And so, um, Trying to digest that that shock, I got admitted at the University of uh, the University of Hamburg, and again that followed me. And uh, when we speak in class, uh, I see I hear about the what we call the five Ks in Africa, you know about criminality, about uh, you know crises, about crime, about uh, you know being poor and the rest of them. And I said yes, I really agree that Africa, you know, we have poor people in Africa, but Africa is not poor. Uh, we have poor people in Nigeria, but Nigeria is not poor. And so when I think about the areas in VI, which I know very well, when I think about the Ubudukato Ranch in Calabar, which I know very well, and I begin to wonder there's a disconnect. Uh, I think uh, the problem is that this, well, they are watching a lot of uh, you know, media, a lot of uh, news about Africa, that they just uh, claim that everything, I just think everything about Africa is, uh, is, uh, is uh, wrong, or it's about war, about disease, and about poverty. So that was how I felt that the first, the best way to basically convince these people, you know, was to, you know, create a, a media, a platform where we could, you know, reach out to them in a very soft manner, like Robbins was trying to, you know, define the art in a soft manner where people can, you know, get, you know, get to listen to you without being aggressive about it. And so we formed the African Heritage Magazine, and then, um, but we have this dilemma that our people. I want to be very careful to define our people, but sometimes they are not the people who are very, you know, very keen in, in reading, especially the kind of people we have within my time in, when we came in. And so we have to have a, a soft cell magazine where we can project the culture of the people at the same time sending out information. And that was how the African Heritage Magazine was born. And so the, the instant reaction was that when this magazine had been circulated, and they were our German friends and European friends were saying, no, this cannot be in Africa. These pictures look like uh, you, you just imported some pictures from Nollywood or from Los Angeles, and you said they are in, in Nigeria. And that gave us the feeling that, wow, if they could think that this area, this piece of land, or this, uh, these pictures are from, uh, from, from US or from UK, then it means that we need to see more of that story. You know, we need to go out from this uh, the danger of a single story and begin to, you know, to define our own narrative. So that was how I got into the magazine, which helped. And so, but I realized that magazine alone uh, will not solve the problem. And so we have to look at how do we get the things that the German like about Africa and to be able to get them closer to us to understand how we think and how we behave. And that leads to the Miss Nigeria. And I can remember a very single story if I'm not taking so much time. When we said Miss uh, Africa, Germany, and um, we're looking for sponsorship and the rest of them. And so I went to Mercedes-Benz, you know, to ask for sponsorship. And so when I got the guy sitting in front of me, I said, we want to organize me a, a cultural event in Miss Africa. And the guy laughed for at least nothing less than 30 seconds. You know, it was an embarrassing laugh. And but I was trying to understand what's so funny about what I said. And when he recovered himself, he asked me a question. He said, do you know what it is to have a beauty? Do you know what a beauty is? is in Germany. Do you know how Germany defined their beauty? 
a, a blonde, you know, blonde eyes, you know, blonde hair, slim. And do I want to, how do I want to, you know, get into a community that divine, defined beauty in such a way? And I'm coming with the African beauty, you know, in Germany. Um, it was one time, one side embarrassing, but the other side, it opened my perspective. What he was trying to tell me that um, the definition of beauty from the German perspective is different from African perspective. And so how do I want to you know, bring in this cultural uh, mix and be able to be successful? Well, the long and short story is that after our three, four, five years about uh, Miss Germany and Miss, uh, Miss, Af Miss Africa Germany, uh, the most beautiful girl uh, was from, from, uh, from uh, uh, Eritrea. Uh, she became Heidi Klum, the most beautiful girl. Uh, and Ilona from Ghana became the 10th the most beautiful girl, the world 10th most beautiful girl. And she was a candidate from my Miss Africa Germany. And so one can begin to see that from this perspective, we're not only trying to change the narrative, but we also begin to change uh, the way uh, the Germans also take us. And that grew up, that got into opportunities for our folks in Germany. And I can tell you that we have Going forward, we had so many of our folks going to into the you know Miss uh, the beauty the, the fashion and beauty areas, uh, producing the mess, the most the voice of Germany was one time a Nigerian, the voice of Germany was one time a Ghanaian, uh, the Kenyans were taking the lead you know with the uh, with beauty pageants uh, you know across across Germany. So it opens up a, a a world of opportunity, and I wish I could see the guy who told me what do I know what beauty is uh, and tell him that yes we have redefined beauty from our own perspective and it's selling. Anyway, having done all this, uh, I realized that culture is one thing, uh, you know, information is one thing, but being able to, you know, the politics set the rules, set the rules for all what we are doing, you know, how the cultural, how culture is defined, how people engage in businesses, the opportunities in businesses can only be defined by the politicians. And that was what drove me that, yes, cultural perspective is good, news is good, but being involved. And the poli in politics uh, makes a lot of difference. And that's what brought me into politics, eventually got, uh, got me elected as the chairman of anti-discrimination. And I'm, I'm happy to say that within the time we stayed there in, in, the, in the parliament, in the Hamburg uh, Senate Integration Bylaws, we're able to push a law where, um, at least it's on paper, uh, which they are trying to implement, and I must give them the credit, that at least 20% of migrants must be, must be employed in the, in the, in the public, uh, public ministries. And that was a part of the, of the things we were able to achieve. Uh, we also were able to achieve that migrant organizations who have all the Germans and all the Europeans being the chairman of the migrant, migrant organization working for Africans, but they are the people who are the leadership. We begin to change that narrative. No, you cannot, def you cannot shave our head at our absence. If you want to define you know, project for us, we need to be involved in defining those projects and be able to, so I think it's exploded now. And so looking backwards, I think uh, we've been able to set a, you know, to set a record and um, what we could, uh, what we could do, you know, to change the narrative using the, what uh, Robbins is defined as a, a arts of, a, arts of a, different arts of a, arts uh, to do that. And but I believe currently now that it's not, having done that, I mean, 28 years in Germany, it is time to export those mix of what we have learned uh, the mix of the good things about the Africans, about the diaspora, and what we have learned to Germany, what we have learned in Germany and Europe and in diaspora, it's time we bring it back home and begin to infect the, our people. And that is why African uh, Wealth uh, Conference uh, becomes very, very, you know, uh, very, very important and a pilot role in achieving that. You know, there are these opportunities. So, what sort of um, conversations are, are taking place within the diaspora when they start to uh, look at opportunities for Africa? Um, could we hear a little bit from, from your perspective on that, Kenneth? I, I totally, once again, agree with Robin, 100%. Why do I say that? Um, we are our former central bank governor, who is currently now a state governor. Um, in one of the meetings we had with him in the diaspora, we emphasized about the risk of uh, investment in, in Africa, including loss of money, including loss of land, including X, Y, Z, X, Y, Z. He did not, uh, he did not disagree with us. He said, you know what? You are absolutely correct. But you know what, again, he added, you could wait until all the problems you mentioned are solved before you invest. But I can assure you by the time you want to invest, there will not be nothing to invest. Because those people who are willing to take the risk will be willing to actually also uh, you know, make the profit. Um, I got a piece of land, just a, a, a few, few um, less than a year, less than two years, um, some some quite good sum of money, you know, with the uh, diasporans coming together, 
Um, you know, what happened? How do I get the death in the first place? Probably I will share that with you. Uh, as the chairman of Nigerians and Diaspora Organization Europe, we're able to secure 2.3 billion US dollar. I repeat, 2.3 billion US dollar, which is supposed to be a humanitarian fund to be invested in the housing, in the housing industry uh, to build about 750,000 housing units. And uh, the argument for securing that fund was basically that when you realize how much the government, the European government, the Western government spend on the head, on the per capita of an African who they probably try want to repatriate to X, Y, Z uh, because of uh, the refugee crisis, how much they, they, they tend to keep them here. We will address the, the cost of pushing these people out of Africa in the first place. And we realize that most of the most of the major reasons of pushing the African youth is because of lack, of lack of perspective, but lack of perspective. They just see there's nothing around them that would, you know. So when we begin to invest, and we're not asking for handouts, when we begin to invest uh, in opportunities and in the you know, human capacity building in Africa, and that the narrative and the concept can change. So that was what actually gave us that, uh, that amount. And because we believe that with the uh, 650,000 housing units, we should go into you know artisans, the electricians, the plumbers. You know, of course, nobody wants to get any substandard houses or invest in fast. But you mean that we need to train them, train and retrain them. You know, relearn, make them to relearn what they know in the best international practice, and now deploy them as direct labels. You know, across uh, the federation, and uh, it was the it was the convention. It was what convinced our our humanitarian uh, you know. Um, uh, you know, spend that to come to come as a partner with us. Unfortunately, uh, like also Robin said, uh, because of corruption in Africa, uh, because of uh, you know uh, politicians being self-centered, they decide to you know to kill that project. One of the funny things they were asking was that Africa, Nigeria, Nigeria is not in the war. We don't have uh, you know humanitarian crisis. So why do we have to go and get the humanitarian fund? We said this is not a loan. You are going to China to seek for a loan less than that amount and mortgaging our future. And this is somebody or this is an, an organization that is ready to partner with us, you know, to you know to make that loan available for us. And so it was quite heartbreaking that at the end of the day, uh, they killed that project. But I said, okay, you can kill, you know, you can you can you know you can destroy a project where you cannot destroy a dream. So we went home uh, to organize ourselves in the diaspora and to get uh, about the. Uh, 550, you know, plots of land where we are going to develop as a diaspora estate. And then you cannot believe that before we said Jack Robinson, that almost 60% of that plot of land are already gone. And if you if you compare what we, you know, for, for competition reason, I will, I, will, I will keep it out there. But if you compare to what you, what we got that land as of the time we got it and to what it is now, it is almost unbelievable 10 times higher that what we have, you know, we got that land from. So I just give you an example of uh, what uh, Robbins was talking about. That the Europe is saturated, and um, China is saturated, and that's why they are they are ready to spend billions of, uh, you know, of, uh, you know, uh, of dollars to look for new routes, new investment routes. Uh, in my course of peace and security study, uh, we realized that the next war, which actually already started in Ukraine, is a war of resources. Who controls resources? Because this and these developed countries. In fact, to be honest with you, and I pray it's not the case. What we are seeing in Ukraine is the beginning of a fight for resource control that is going to come. Because what I'm trying to say in the fact that the Africa is a potential land, it's a virgin land for investment, where you have almost 100 percent return on investment, and so that's why the scramble, the second scramble for Africa for resources. So. What is important, and that's actually the message I'm going to you know, send across, that it is time for us, the Africans in diaspora, to move in with all our expertise and our experiences and begin to invest in Africa. So that we don't let, because it's always very easy to say we're allowing China to invest in Africa, we're allowing the Europeans to invest in Africa. For a common man in the village, he's not interested about who makes his life better. He's not interested in who builds the road. He's not interested in who builds the medical center. He just wants to have a decent life. And he's willing to work with anybody who is going to give him that person a decent life. So we know that the Africa is a virgin land. We know it's a place you can have return on investment 100%. It is our responsibility to begin to go to our respective countries and begin to invest in Africa so that we can be in control of our resources. And that's what I hope that this, uh, you know, part of this uh, African World Conference is going to be able to resound again to the diaspora community to, you know, to work on it. 
really like to hear from you, um, Kenneth, is um, what you would think of as, uh, as, as I guess your, um, we could call it your parting shot to our, our listeners um, who have been really good with uh, putting comments in the chat. Thank you very much. Um, but again, if you have any questions to, um, to the listeners, please go ahead and, and put them in the chat there. Um, our uh, panelists will, will get to, to those questions, um, but even as, as, they, as they give us their, their parting shot. So if you could give us your, your three take homes that we should, uh, we should keep in mind, um, that would be fantastic. And uh, I'll start with you, Kenneth. I think I've listened to Robin very, very you know, attentively. And I think I've also followed the comments on the, on the chat. Uh, and I think uh, it shows that they, we are hitting it home, that at least they are getting their understanding that, um, you know, that's the right thing to do. I mean, Dalak was said collaboration. I totally agree with you. I think uh, Robins have uh, also made a lot, of, a lot of about how we can collaborate. My part in short is that collaboration is very, very important. Networking is very, very important. Uh, what I personally think, in addition to all what Robin has said, which is totally correct, is that we, we need to build a framework, especially a political framework that will make the reception or the plans of the, of the diaspora acceptable at home. Because like I said, like in Hamburg, uh, all what we are planning can be torpedoed just by the political uh, class who probably felt you know, that we're coming to take out so much life from them or are trying to make something different. So in addition to all what we have said, we should also get involved in politics. You know, Getting involved in politics means that we will join to set the rules how this uh, you know, collaboration and how this investment could be managed. And that is actually one of the reasons why I decided to you know, head back to Nigeria. I mean, uh, Robin sp uh, spoke about the diaspora returnees. And yes, I'm leading that in Nigeria and I'm, I want to get as, mo as, as much diaspora as possible, as many diaspora as possible uh, from, uh, from Germany, from, from Europe, you know, to come to Nigeria and begin to, to get involved in politics. So together we can you know, get this collaboration Robin is talking about, we can get this network Robin is talking about, and begin to put it, to put it into policy, into policy framework where the diasporas, you know, business can be protected, where they have a leverage to get in, in you know, without any their old, old um, you know, politicians, uh, you know, standing the way for us. So networking is important, collaboration is important, but also getting politically active is also very important. Um, I do have a, a couple of questions for you, Kenneth, before we, um, we go to, uh, to Robin. Um, there's somebody who has said, um, Kolabomi Adeko has said, I agree with the political framework necessity. Investing when some government policy uh, can jettison years of effort is one big fear of many would-be investors. Um, and then there's a direct question from uh, Joy Zenz, who's asking, how can diaspora work together in Germany as Africans and support Africa? So if you could comment on the comment and answer the question, that would be great. Well, I'm surprised that Joy is actually asking that question uh, because she has actually been in the forefront of building alliance across across the across the diaspora. Uh, she has she's been a champion of bringing the women together, uh, the European uh, the professional the African women in Europe AWE. Um, where I was, um, you know, a little bit um, flattered when I was given the African Role Model of the Year, you know. Um, uh, but I, I I see their work very very important. I see the work of a, of a, of a, of a, a African com a World Conference very very important, and I think uh, again what what uh, Robin said. I I just I wish I could have her every day, you know, to listen to her because uh, you know I feed into one of the things she's trying to say. We don't need to give up. We don't expect this is going to be a sprint. It's not a sprint. It's a marathon. You know, we just keep repeating that. We keep saying that. We keep giving that. So uh, to answer the question of joy. Um, we've been working, collaborating a lot. I mean, like I said, uh, Joy has been a, a, you know, a champion of that. Uh, whether from Kenya, whether from Nigeria, we have to, you know, we build this network and we do this collaboration. In fact, the last uh, seminar, actually, uh, the last uh, workshop I attended, and also the speaker in this uh, platform, was how the Kenyans, you know, build, there's a special name, they call it, you know, a business format in Kenya, uh, where the diaspora have to invest. I've been trying to re replicate that model in Nigeria, and they have been reaching out front and back, you know, uh, on 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 so many of those uh, speakers to see how we can build that uh, model together. Oh, they said a circle. Yeah, that's the correct one. Circle. You know how they build a circle in in Kenya. I find it amazing. 
And I'm thinking that um, uh, if we could replicate that in Nigeria. So good to know we have people like Robin who I can reach out to, people like uh, Joy who I can reach out to, to see how they were able to build this model. It's stupidity to start all over again. But like you said, why do you need to start over again when the resources are there? And I also agree. I mean, because of the today's world, with the you know internet world, with the so many information bombarding you from left and right, sometimes it's frustrating, you know, to get the right information. So when you have people like Joy, people like Robin, people like you, you know, who already have this, you know, information, uh, again, that's why they say collaboration becomes the the mother of the game. You know, what do you know about this? Where do I get information about that? And then you just key into that. And when we do more of this collaboration in diaspora. Together, we become the Ubuntu of Africa and be able to make so much difference. Thank you.